Composites are making robots lighter, stronger, and smarter. Tesla is leading the charge with industry-leading materials in their Optimus humanoid robots. Welcome to the future of robotics, where tech meets AI dope. We're going deep on this episode into composites and how they're changing robotics, especially Tesla's Tesla bot. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty revolutionary stuff. We're not just like uh, slapping on a new coat of paint. We're really rethinking the whole way robots are built, taking inspiration from the human body, the most efficient machine we know of. Yeah, we take for granted how strong and efficient our bodies are. But so where does Tesla bot stand right now? Well, it's already a Pretty amazing piece of engineering, I gotta say. It's got this humanoid design with 40 degrees of freedom, and it's meant to work in human environments, doing complex tasks, talking and gesturing the whole nine yards. Yeah, I've seen the videos they put out. It's sorting things, even standing on one leg. It's clearly evolving fast, but it's still mostly plastic and metal, right? Right now, yeah, that's where composites come in. It's not just about being strong OR light. It's the combination that's so revolutionary. Think about carbon fiber like you see in high-performance cars or planes. That's just one example of what these materials can do. Okay, so let's say we swap out some of Teslavod's parts with composites. What kind of difference would that make in the real world? Hmm, let's start with walking. Imagine Teslabot's legs. Right now, they use a good amount of energy with each step. Now picture those legs made from composite tailored for strength, just like our tendons. Suddenly, each movement uses less energy, the battery lasts longer, and the motion is smoother. It's a huge jump. It's like the difference between a clunky, energy-guzzling robot and one that moves gracefully, almost like a human. Exactly. And it's not just the legs. Think about the actuator shafts, the parts that move the limbs. With regular materials, you're kind of stuck with one size fits all. But continuous fiber 3D printing, which is how we make a lot of composites, lets us make shafts with different thicknesses and fiber orientations along the length. It's like giving each movement custom-tuned power delivery. So it's not just lighter. It's smarter about how it uses energy like a car with a finely tuned multi-gear transmission instead of a basic one. That's a perfect analogy. And this custom design solves problems that have been bugging robotics forever. Like robots in delicate environments like healthcare composites make robots strong, but also capable of really precise movement. So you don't have a big metal robot operating on someone or handling fragile things. Right, you wouldn't want that. Hey, want our free AI dope top AI tools that we use? Chat below. It's our live Google Sheets packed with over 100 killer tools, video, music, photos, AI voices, productivity, script writing, YouTube hacks, captions, the works, always growing, live Google Sheet, always free, AI, dope top AI tools that we use. Download and chat below. Back to the show. So we've talked legs, actuator shafts. What about Teslabot's outer shell? What could composites do there? Well, imagine Teslabot's sleek exterior, but it's incredibly light A and D strong. That means better agility, impact resistance, like bumping into stuff without damage. And again, a big boost to energy efficiency. It's like giving Teslabot a superpower. The strength of metal, but the weight and agility of something way more nimble. But how are these composites made? There are two main methods we use automated fiber placement or AFP and continuous fiber 3D printing. Okay, let's start with AFP. I'm picturing like a high-tech loom weaving super strong fibers together. Yeah. Am I close? Yeah. You're in the right ballpark. AFP uses a robotic arm to lay down thin, strong strips of material. Could be carbon fiber, glass fiber, even Kevlar, onto a hold with incredible precision. Okay, I see it. But why tape? Why not use a sheet of material? That's where the ingenuity is using tape gives us control over the direction and placement of the fibers. Imagine building a bridge, but with microscopic fibers, you wouldn't just put them down randomly, right? Right, you'd arrange them to distribute the weight and make it strong. Exactly, and AFP lets us do that on a tiny scale. By carefully placing those fibers, we can make parts that are strong in certain directions, like muscles and tendons in our bodies, so you get maximum strength where you need it and minimum weight where you don't. So it's like weaving a fabric of strength layer by layer with these high-tech tapes. So the tape goes on a mold, what happens next? As the tape is put down, it's heated and pressed to bond layers together. This makes a solid lightweight structure that's incredibly strong for its size. And because it's automated, we can make really complex shapes accurately and repeatedly, like a robot's arm with its curves and complicated shape. Normally, you'd need lots of pieces, joints, and fasteners to make that kind of thing, but with AFP, it's one seamless piece with the strength exactly where it needs to be. Like a 3D puzzle, but instead of snapping pieces together, you're fusing layers of super strong material. What kind of molds do you use? The molds can be made of lots of things depending on how complex and big the part is. 
Sometimes we use traditional metal molds, but we're using more and more 3D printed molds, which gives us even more flexibility and lets us make prototypes faster. So 3D printing is part of the AFP process itself. That's pretty cool. It is. It shows how these advanced manufacturing technologies are all coming together to make production better and more efficient. Okay, so we have this precise automated process for making strong, lightweight structures. Mm -hmm. But AFP has been around for a while, right? It wasn't made for robots, was it? You're right. AFP started in aerospace where being light and strong is really important. Think about an airplane wing. It needs to be incredibly strong to handle the stresses of flying, but also light for fuel efficiency. AFP was the perfect solution. So airplanes were the testing ground pushing the limits of this tech to make those super strong but light structures. And now that same technology is changing how we make robots. Exactly. And just like in aerospace, AFP is solving real problems in robotics. Like with drones, weight is a huge factor in how long they can fly and how much they can carry. By making drone parts lighter and stronger with AFP, we can make them perform way better. Makes sense. Every gram saved means more flying time and efficiency. Okay, I'm seeing the potential of AFP. What about continuous fiber 3D printing? How's that different? With continuous fiber 3D printing, instead of laying down tape, we build the part layer by layer like regular 3D printing, but we use continuous strands of fiber woven into the structure as it's built not just plastic or metal powder. So you're weaving super strong fibers right into the part like a 3D tapestry of strength. That's a great way to put it. Imagine a 3D printer with two nozzles. One puts out the matrix material like plastic or resin. The other lays down the continuous fibers, carbon fiber, uh, glass fiber or Kevlar. It's like having a tiny loom inside the printer, weaving those fibers into the part as it's made. Wow, so you're making the composite material in real time as you print. How much control do you have over where the fibers go? Oh, we have a ton of control. The 3D printer software lets us say exactly where the fibers go and in what direction with really high precision. We can make straight lines, curves, even loops and spirals all while putting those fibers right into the structure. Like a robotic embroidery machine sewing patterns of strength into the part. Exactly, and this lets us make parts that are not only strong, but also designed for a specific purpose. Like one part of Tesla Bot's hand could be strong while another is flexible. That level of control is amazing. So this isn't just a better kind of plastic. We're talking about designing materials with specific properties built right in. Exactly, that's the power of composites in robotics. It's like the difference between building a house from pre-cut wood and being able to sculpt the wood itself into any shape you want. It's a whole new way of thinking about materials, almost like we're designing matter itself. And that's what's so revolutionary about composites. We're not limited by old materials anymore. We can design materials to do exactly what we need them to do, no matter how complex. Okay, I'm seeing the possibilities here. But let's get back to TeslaBot. We've talked about how composites could be good, but are there robots out there using these materials to solve real problems? Oh, absolutely there are. One big area where composites are already making a difference is prosthetics. It's tough to make a prosthetic limb that's both light and strong enough for daily use. Composites let us copy the complex structure of bone so it's strong where it needs to be, but also light. So someone with a prosthetic leg made with composites could walk more comfortably and naturally. Exactly, and it's not just copying nature. We can also add things like shock absorption and energy return, which are important for running or climbing stairs. Composites give us the tools to create prosthetics that don't just replace limbs, they actually make people's abilities better. That's amazing. It's like taking something tragic, like losing a limb and turning it into a chance to push the limits of what humans can do. And that's what's so exciting about composites and robotics. It's not just about better machines, it's about a better future for all of us. I'm inspired, but before we get too carried away, I want to know how this all works in practice. Let's look closer at the manufacturing processes themselves. Okay, let's step onto the factory floor then and we'll start with AFP. It's a process that often surprises people with how elegant it is. I love elegant solutions, especially when it comes to something complex like building robots. Yeah. So where do we start with AFP? Picture a robotic arm with what looks like a high-tech tape dispenser that's the heart of the AFP system. It lays down these thin, strong, Strips of material could be carbon fiber, glass fiber, even Kevlar onto a mold, and it does it with incredible precision. Okay, I'm picturing it, but why tape? Why not just a sheet of material? Ah, that's the clever part. Using tape means we can control exactly where those fibers go and in what direction with amazing accuracy. It's like if you were building a bridge, but instead of using big steel beams, you had microscopic fibers. 
You wouldn't just lay them down randomly, would you? No, you'd have to arrange them carefully to make sure the bridge was strong and could handle the weight. Exactly. And that's what AFP lets us do, but on a super tiny scale. By controlling how those fibers are laid down, we can make parts that are strong in specific directions, just like muscles and tendons in our body. So we get the most strength where it's needed and keep the weight down where it's not. So it's like weaving a fabric of strengths layer by layer yeah. with these high-tech tapes. So the tape is laid onto a mold and what... As the tape goes down, it's heated and pressed to bond the layers together. This makes a solid, lightweight structure that's super strong for its size. And because it's automated, we can make really complex shapes accurately and over and over again. Think about the curved, complex shape of a robot's arm. Normally, you'd need lots of pieces, joints, and fasteners to make something like that. But with AFP, you get one smooth piece with the strength right where it needs to be. It's like building a 3D puzzle, but instead of snapping the pieces together, we're fusing layers of super strong material. Hmm. What about the molds themselves? What are they made of? The molds can be all sorts of materials, depends on how complex and big the part is. Hmm. Sometimes we use regular metal molds, but more and more we're seeing 3D printed molds, which gives us more design freedom and lets us make prototypes really fast. So 3D printing is a part of the AFP process itself. That's pretty amazing. It is. It really shows how these advanced manufacturing technologies are all coming together to make production better and faster. Okay, so we've got this precise automated system for making strong, lightweight parts. But you mentioned AFP has been around for a while. It wasn't originally made for robots, was it? You're right. AFP actually started in the aerospace industry where being lightweight but strong is super important. Think about an airplane wing. It has to be incredibly strong to handle all those forces in the air, but it also needs to be light to save fuel. AFP was the perfect solution for that. So airplanes were like the testing ground for this technology, pushing the limits to make those super strong and lightweight parts. And now that same technology is being used to revolutionize robotics. Exactly. And AFP is solving real problems in robotics, just like it did in aerospace. Take drones, for example. Yeah. Weight is a huge factor in how long they can fly and how much they can carry. So using AFP to make lighter, stronger parts for drones can really boost their performance. Yeah, that makes sense. Every gram you save means longer flights and better efficiency. I'm starting to see the potential here. What about continuous fiber 3D printing? How does that work? With continuous fiber 3D printing, we don't use tape. We build the part layer by layer, just like regular 3D printing. But instead of just using plastic or metal powder, we're adding continuous strands of fiber into the part as we build it. So you're basically weaving those super strong fibers right into the part, creating a 3D tapestry of strength. That's a great way to put it. Imagine a 3D printer with two nozzles. One nozzle puts out the base material like plastic or resin, and the other nozzle lays down the continuous fibers could be carbon fiber, glass fiber, even Kevlar. It's almost like having a tiny loom inside the printer, weaving the fibers into the structure as it's made. Wow, so you're making a composite material in real time as the part is printed. That's amazing. How much control do you have over where those fibers go? We have a surprising amount of control, actually. The 3D printer software lets us decide exactly where the fibers go and in what direction with super high precision. We can create straight lines, curves, even loops and spirals, all while embedding those fibers directly into the part. It's like having a tiny robotic sewing machine, stitching patterns of strength right into the part that's incredible. It is, and it opens up so many possibilities for creating parts that are not only strong, but also designed exactly for what they need to do. For example, we could make one part of Teslabot's hand strong for gripping, while another part is more flexible for delicate tasks. So we're not just talking about a better plastic here. We're designing materials with special properties built right into them. Exactly. That's what makes composites so powerful in robotics. It's like the difference between building with pre-cut lumber and being able to sculpt the wood itself into any shape you can imagine. It's like we're not just building with materials anymore. We're designing the materials themselves. And that's the revolution composites are bringing. We're not limited by old materials anymore. We can design materials to do exactly what we need them to do, no matter how complex. Okay, I see the possibilities here. But let's get back to Testabot. We've talked about how composites could be used, but are there real world examples of this technology being used in robots right now? Oh, absolutely. One area where composites are already making a huge difference is in prosthetics. It's a real challenge to create a prosthetic limb that's both lightweight and strong enough for everyday use. But composites allow us to mimic the complex structure of bone, providing strength where it's needed while keeping the weight down. So someone using a prosthetic leg made with composites could potentially walk with more comfort and a more natural gait. 
Exactly. And we can do even more than just copy nature. We can design in features like shock absorption and energy return, which are crucial for activities like running or climbing stairs. Composites are giving us the ability to create prosthetics that don't just replace lost limbs, they actually enhance human capabilities. That's amazing. It's like turning a tragedy like limb loss into an opportunity to push the boundaries of human potential. Exactly. And that's what's so exciting about composites and robotics. We're not just building better machines, we're working towards a better future for everyone. Okay. I'm definitely getting inspired here, but before we get carried away, I want to get a better understanding of how this technology works in practice. Let's take a closer look at the manufacturing processes themselves. So it seems like we're entering this whole new world of robotics, where the machines aren't just tools, they're like extensions of us able to interact with the world in ways we never thought possible. It's incredible. Yeah. But I do have a question. What about the robots that are already out there, the ones made with those old school materials? Can those be upgraded with composites? That's a great question. And in a lot of cases, the answer is yes. We're seeing more and more companies using composites to retrofit existing robots. It's like taking an old car and swapping out the engine for a newer, more powerful one. You don't have to get rid of the whole car, just to upgrade the important parts. So you're taking your robots that might be a little slow or inefficient and giving them a performance boost with composites. Mm -hmm. I like that. What kind of improvements are we talking about? Well, by replacing heavy metal parts with lighter, stronger composite ones, you can really improve the robot's speed agility and how much energy it uses. And because you can tailor composites to specific needs, you can even make a robot more functional, give it a wider range of motion or a more delicate touch. So it's not just making them faster and stronger, it's making them more adaptable and versatile. Exactly. And that's a game changer for industries like manufacturing and logistics. Think about a warehouse robot that can move heavier things, navigate tight spaces and handle fragile objects, all while using less energy that means more productivity and lower costs. Okay, I see the economic advantages, but let's see now for a second. For someone listening who maybe isn't a robotics engineer, what's the big takeaway here? Why should they care about composites? I think the most important thing to remember is that composites aren't just for high-tech industries anymore. They're becoming a core part of our technological future with uses that affect almost every part of our lives. So it's not just robots. We're talking about cars, yeah. airplanes, wind turbines even medical devices. Exactly as we learn more about what composites can do, we'll see them in more and more everyday products. My mind is racing with the possibilities, but let's give our listener one last thing to think about. What's the most amazing thing you can imagine composites being used for? Hmm. If I had to pick just one, it would be using composites to create robots that are almost impossible to tell apart from living things. Imagine a robot that moves senses and interacts with the world just like we do with a body that's as complex and adaptable as our own. Wow, that's a pretty bold vision. It sounds like something right out of science fiction. It does, doesn't it? But with all the incredible progress in composites, artificial intelligence, and bio-inspired design, I mm -hmm. think it's something we can achieve. We're already seeing hints of it in research labs all over the world. I'm blown away composites aren't just a material. They're a glimpse into a future we can only begin to imagine. Exactly. And it's a future where robots and humans can work together in ways that are both amazing and beneficial. So for everyone listening, as you go about your day, take a minute to think about the incredible power of composites. They're shaping our world in ways we're only starting to understand. And who knows, maybe one day you'll be shaking hands with a robot that's so lifelike you won't even be able to tell the difference. For even more deep dive into humanoid robots, click this next video where we talk about how the U.S. military is testing everything from robot dogs to swarms of drones. Click to see how the future of warfare is hardcore AI dope.